Hey everybody, welcome back to Array Tarot. And we are going to be doing a moon cycle reading, but actually I'm gonna add in a little bit more astrology in the planetary positions because we haven't <laughs> caught up in a while. <laughs> so getting some cards out, getting some cards together, putting that to the side. Let me get some more cards. Um, I'm gonna be using the Lady Tarot cards. I'm going to be using what else? What other, what other kind of cards am I going to be using? I'm going to be using the Dreamscape Oracle cards. And I'm going to be using, y'all know my favorite right now, the Fortune Queens. Uh, because why not, baby? Why not? Um, so getting started to, to this Moon Cycle reading, or just explaining it if you haven't been here before. I know you've been here before, so it's not a big deal. But I'll just do a little bit of housekeeping, y'all. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to look at the planetary positions that are going to be coming up and we're going to have a little conversation. We're going to pull cards uh, for any clarity there, too. And just to, you know, illuminate the experience and bring more perspective into what's going on, baby doll. That's going to be my new thing. Y'all done fucked up there. <laughs> I said it one time and I, can, I cannot let it go anyway so in a fun way let's just start off with the moon so as we are doing the recording now it is april it is um i'm doing this recording on april 9th and it's going to be up shortly but the most important part is it's going to be discussing the new moon that is on april 12th and it's going to be a new moon in aries Ooh, how exciting first of all shout out to all the aries or those who have aries placements in their charts we all have aries somewhere you know aries is doing something in a house somewhere so that's a little bit of everybody so shout out to you <laughs> Anyway, for Aries, Aries is the youngest sign. <clears throat> the sign started Aries, they ended Pisces. Aries is really that age from zero to seven. It really is the beginning. It's the, initi the initiation, the initiative, the spark. It's like when you, you know, strike a match, you light a match, that initial action right there is that Aries action. And Aries is ruled by Mars and, you know, the, it's the, the, the god of war and it in your you know mars placement is really um dependent on how you go after the things you want how you battle how assertive you are uh what is it that you do in order to get to where you're going you know how, how do you have that journey that adventure um that's a lot of aries energy and with it in the new moon in aries that means this is going to be the perfect time to begin the initiative of something new yes it is going to be the perfect time to begin the initiative of something new now you can be doing a new approach to something that you've always done before but something new it is not Taurus energy it is not cancer energy it is not capricorn energy it is aries energy aries energy is literally all about just action intention that magical spark before you just you know set it off <laughs> i was just thinking about the movie i was like set it off that's my movie anyway so i have let me move this stuff out the way so i can see so i'm gonna channel first thank you universe thank you energy thank you energetic helpers oh that card already came out thank you all that is for our highest vibrational good only please bring them to myself too clarity on anything that has to happen with the moon cycle and the current astrological placements in order to bring a message of wealth health abundance peace adventure clarity just bridging together or whatever information we need at this moment we are open we surrender to the path of you know the highest vibrational good only and we are connected i say all of this in the name of i am okay so three cards popped out and so the first part that card that popped out is the gift let me see if you can see it okay uh oh yes and i hope you like the background y'all know me y'all know me still the same og okay um y'all know me I, i'm always just doing random stuff with the background because it makes me feel good so back to this anyway so this card is what popped out during the shuffling and so 
The first thing that is coming up for this new moon in Aries happening April 12th. I've heard um, some people say it's going to happen on um, uh, April 11th. So it says it, it, between Sunday, April 11th and Monday, April 12th. But it says officially April April um, 12th. The reason why they say it a little bit before because uh, the moon is in Aries. So, you know, if it's in Aries, I mean, it is what it is, but the moon will reach its new moon status, this initiation status, um, at Monday, April 12th in Aries. And then immediately the next day, it's going to be in Taurus. So at this energy, especially that Aries Taurus cusp energy, there's a gift here. Now think about it like this. You are on this journey, this adventure, you know, you are in this battle, whatever it is, but there's a gift behind being able to go after what you want. And it's really not based off of things in the past. So sometimes you might have fear to do something. Sometimes you might need to be a little bit more practical. Sometimes you might need to be a little bit more adventurous. It's not about that at all. It's saying like a fresh baby out of the womb, you have to go after the things you want without, you know, like you're like releasing the inhibitions and you're just going out there and you're doing what you need to do. So that's the first card that came up. Second card that came up is Luna Moth. So this is a transformation that's going to be happening behind the scenes in the dark. It's going to be something that's happening for you within yourself, something that only you can really see, only you can prevent forest fires. <laughs> only you can really see and that's a little bit different a lot of times who doesn't like external validation to understand if we're going in the correct direction in life but this is a scenario where you got to pull from within yourself to go where you want to go and you literally have everything you need it's just mastering this and this is my heart mastering that mastering your thoughts and your feelings or just being in a peaceful relationship with your thoughts and your feelings i'm not saying you have to be this perfect thing that never has a negative thought or never has a down day because sometimes when you're exhausted it just tells you like you need to take a break there's nothing wrong with that but thinking that you need to push push past no but just also knowing that just because you had maybe a bad day one day doesn't mean the whole week is just fucked up. You don't throw the baby out with the bath water, okay? Like, just know that if there's some days you need to take off, take some days off and then jump back in there. And also have a reasonable pace, a pace that is makes sense to you. If you're going too fast um, and you can't keep that up, it's really like the tortoise and the hare all over again. And then we have the white buffalo, just this sign of wisdom. You're going to be, and you have been receiving these messages that are pointing you in the right direction. Just saying like everything is going to be okay for whatever it is that you know, you're know you focusing on right now. So pay attention to them. Instead of feeding into the fear of how you used to process things, just trust in the process, what's in front. Even if it feels like things are like going to shit, like you're losing things or things are leaving your life, or just there are shifts, you know, changes. Um, just trust in yourself in the process that you're being pulled out of something for something better. So that's going to be that Monday energy. So what you want to do if you are someone who does like channeling sessions, you do any kind of energy work, this is the time that you really go and you do what you need to do. It is so important because the entire phase of the moon like really rests on what you initiated at this moment, at this time. And that is so important. I'm going to drop this today for you to give you enough time to really sit and think about it think about what you want to accomplish think about what this new energy and this new spark is and you're like fuck yeah i'm about to go after that shit boom whatever that is you have to be with the energy and be very clear with it and then just do whatever it is that you've been you know um that is a part of your practice whether that is a prayer whether whether that is you know doing this mantra work of reciting whatever it is you want you know i am greater i am wholer i am together i am peaceful i'm greater i'm whole i'm together i'm peaceful and doing kind of channeling work there going into your meditation sessions going into your channeling sessions going Going into your spell work you know using the moon the actual moon all our witchy friends out there you know you all like really 
teach us so much about the moon because you have such a strong connection to it through your various lineages um, to have and understand the, the full power of the moon to really like uh, you know do the work of making sure that we appreciate the moon for all that it is and so the things that you can do of course what I just talked about you know going out and actually utilizing the moon at that moment and just starting like i'm dropping shit everywhere just really starting what it is you want whatever it is that you want like saying like okay i'm clear on this and i'm gonna go for it and just follow it because with the phases of the moon we have so much happening so it's like the beginning of the moon is what you will the the new moon is what you will focus on during that phase then you're going to go to your waxing then you're going to go to your first quarter so think about it like this okay so it's a it's at a point where the the new moon is like you can't really see it right there's not necessarily an illumination yet you you probably you could see the moon but it's not really that illumination and then you get that first waxing crescent which is really that momentum so whatever it is that you want to do right now start to see that as time progresses let me see exactly when um the waxing is the next day you know all the way into the following week so you have a whole week of just building up initiative that's all it is it's building up momentum even though it's going to be in different signs it's going to be taurus and it's going to be in gemini and then it will be in cancer it is still that initiation of building up the energy building up the energy until you get to that first quarter which really is like okay you're going to reach your new sets of challenges so think about it like this you start something you feel really good about it boom 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 you're going after it and then you're gonna hit you know some opportunities or some challenges that that um make you have to it's all it is is just like a fork in the road and it's like you hit it and you're like where do i go do i go this way that way or that way and then you're gonna go into you know you you're by that first quarter half of the moon is visible and then you're going to go into that waxing gibbous and then you're going to get into the full moon and the full moon is really the celebration so think about like everything that you started getting there and you're going to see it at its peak and then you're going to have to you know follow through so as things start to wind down and you're going to start a new cycle soon you have to follow through so everything that you wanted to do you have to follow follow through so the the moon shows us that like look you know it's the fun time or it's the you know the brave time it's the challenging time it's the boring time it's all those things very quickly for us to be able to look at and so basically with this with this um upcoming kind of energy is really like that whole week you're just going to be worried about building up that momentum just build it up build up build it up and then the following week you're going to hit that second like that first quarter where you're going to be like oh okay so this is like what decisions do i need to make now and then we could talk more about that next week but let's go ahead and pull some more cards i'm gonna do the fortune tarot with this one excuse me can you get out the way laptop because you're like taking up all my space okay thank you love you bye <laughs> okay Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bringing some more clarity on what's going on. <laughs> My mic is just everywhere, like everything is everywhere anyway. Bringing some more clarity on what's going on. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. So we have the devil card. Let me see, make sure you can see that. You have, you have the devil card, you have the knight of pentacles, you have the knight of cups. And you have the four of pentacles so let's start off with the devil card the devil card is basically saying that there has been a, a funky habit that you have had in the past that has prevented you from going in the direction you wanted to go on and usually it has to do with like low self-esteem or not believing in yourself or something like that or something that you tell yourself so you might have this understanding of how life is and you haven't been challenging it and you happen to do this from time to time just to keep yourself safe when in reality what you really need to do is make sure that you're keeping yourself open to the possibility that there's always an opportunity to be able to change you know the way that you're perceiving life a lot of people will grow up and learn something in their childhood of how they perceive life regardless of if like they had good influences or negative influences and then when they get older they perceive whatever it is that they learned as this is natural 
and normal. No, it's just really a habit of what you learn. So if you had people who maybe were not in the best scenario or situations, you're going to naturally feel like it, comfortable or familiar, let's say familiar in those scenarios that don't necessarily serve you. And because of that, you have to break that and it's uncomfortable because there's been many times before where you didn't do that. You didn't question it. You might have this like, you know, existential crisis of like, what is that? What is, what is all of this? You know, is it really meant? No, like literally any way that you feel, if it's not supporting you, you can work through it. And there's going to be a challenge in having to work through that. You're literally throwing out the roadmap that you have for how you perceive things, but just make sure it is in Aryan. Ooh, I don't want to use that word. <laughs> make sure it is an Aries. <laughs> make sure it is an Aries <laughs> um, type. I'm trying to think in Latin, like the plural for Aries. I'm about to look that up. Make sure it is an Aries type conversation um, that is going to happen with you and your brain cells. And then the second thing that we have is the fourth of pinnacles. So you're going to be pulled in a lot of directions, you know, and it's not even uh, you're in a lot of directions and everything's going well. It's like you got to balance a lot of things. You got to balance work, life, hobbies, who you are here, where you are there. And it's enough that it's like there's a limb for everything that you need to do, but also at the same time, you know, it means you got to be on your shit. You got to be consistent. You got to show up. It doesn't matter if like, you know, the coin under your foot is acting a little funny, you know, you got to give to it. I'm not saying like stop everything else and give to that. I'm saying you got to give to it the amount that you're equally giving to other things or whatever that balance is that's important to you. And being consistent, even during those times of like mental anguish is particularly um, difficult for a a lot of people then you have your knights of cups so you're changing the way that you approach your feelings you're changing you know this warrior adventure energy that i've been talking about is really this change of how you perceive things how your energy perceives things and how you are going about the things that you you want and it's a different it's a it's a badass energy it's like Fuck it, I don't care, you know, like I'm gonna do what I need to do and not just being reckless, like like basically saying, here's the plan. I'm gonna go with the plan. I'm gonna troubleshoot anything that comes up and boom, boom, you know, you're gonna get there. That's just how it is. It doesn't matter if something shows up or some stuff that's pulling you from the past. It's gonna be like, hey, don't worry about that. Like, I mean, I'm sure you'll still feel uncomfortable, but like the bigger goal is really to get you on the other side so you can have a very, very, very different experience. And then we have our Knight of Pentacles. So both in the way that you're feeling and how you are approaching your sense of comfort, your sense of support is drastically going to change, like drastically going to change. And it's going to require you to be brave to do so. It just is like you just have to be brave. You just have to show up to the experience. You just have to do the best you can and be consistent. It doesn't matter that sometimes you don't feel like it or sometimes you might. So I, I think sometimes the things that are particularly hard is that when nothing bad is happening it's just you think you know you need this overcompensation of something having to be like huge instead of just being like you know what this is reasonable <laughs> this is reasonable like you know that the bigger thing is coming on the horizon and just work on that delayed gratification back to our regularly scheduled program if y'all don't mind if i Remoisten the lips. For those who watch on Reiki Healing Hope, I hope you, <laughs> I hope y'all liked um the amethyst healing where I whipped out the chapstick and I'm like I wear chapstick before I go to bed because I don't know why when you just like moisturize your lips before you go to bed for some reason child like the lips just are just unbelievable in the morning. Anyway, so that's that's that. So boom. So we talked about the moon. And again, for this upcoming week, it's pretty much just moving from Aries into Taurus. Mon uh, Taurus is Tuesday and Wednesday. Gemini is Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Cancer is Sunday, Monday. And then that first quarter I was talking about where those kind of like, okay, fork in the road, where do I go? How do I do this? Please don't freak out about it. It's going to happen that following Tuesday in Leo and all of this is a little bit different. Like Tuesday is going to, as you're building momentum, Tuesday is going to tell you to be a bit more, Tuesday and Wednesday are going to tell you to be a bit more practical. It's going to say to you like, 
hey, like whatever this thing is that you want to start, that you want to work at, that you want to initiate, like what is the practicality behind it? Like what can you do? Think about Taurus energy. Taurus energy is not, you know, um, water, it's not air, it's not fire, it's earth. So it's about just practical, just what makes sense? How can you actually make this happen? And that's a good thing because then you're realistic. You're not really working only on like, the big energy or the invisible energy of the universe you're working on things that are actually practical like if you want to build a garden you start with the seed or you start with a sprout or you just buy a plant and you just start to accumulate whereas you know the big picture is like you know what? i want to will these plants i want i want to come across a garden one day and then i want to like you know it's just it, it brings some practicality because this is definitely a time in which one could and should be a bit more practical and then gemini is going to bring that um critical um uh, connecting of points so where you may have not saw a connection before that thursday friday and saturday is going to bring you that connection of like oh wow i never really thought about that before you know and then that um sunday is going to bring in that movement and that feeling and it's going to it's right before the first quarter moon so it's going to give you an opportunity that might feel like a challenge but it's an opportunity to address your emotional well-being your sense of support and comfort as you are going through an adventure you're going through you know this journey how do you talk to yourself or how do you feel about yourself as things happen as things are uncertain or things are certain or you know stuff like that so it gives you that opportunity so i'm actually going to move on in the planets um because i said we were going to talk about more than just the moon but just asking the universe to bring any additional messages about the moon that we should pay attention to appreciate you okay i got four cards oh oh this one was really sticking to me okay so the first card that pops out to me is the hermit because it really um resonates let me see if you can see it it really resonates with the luna moth which is this is a transformation that is going to be happening internal you are 100 percent responsible for it you know you can have communities in which you work with them and they can help support you in um you know holding yourself accountable but really it's not something that's going to be external your external growth is actually going to happen much later but this is something that's really going to be pivotal to your overall growth in general and so don't be afraid to kind of go after those things so that's what's happening there then we have this feeling of the five of cups where it's like there is this what i think is specifically going to happen around april 18th and 19th when that waxing crescent is in cancer there's going to be this tendency that on this journey as remember i was just talking about the fork the, i use these but this is um on this journey you might hit a situation where this is actually the better place to go, but you might have many times before just turned around and always be focused on the things that didn't happen right or the things that didn't go right in the past or even in this journey when the solution is always in this direction. So you really have to force yourself to turn around and begin the, you know, the painful work of learning how to fight off the your own insecurity to walk in the path that is for your greatest good. And that can feel uncomfortable in this moment, but it's an opportunity because once you break that habit and you reinforce that, then you'll be much more courageous in the future. Because ultimately, you know, this is what's coming up for you. The queen of wands, you know, the, the initiative that you take now and pushing past your comfort zone is going to take you to this in the long run. This is what you want. You want to be at the top, both emotionally in how you go about things, as well as um, just being able to do to initiate whatever it is you need to do or follow through on whatever it is you need to do. So this is something that's gonna be showing up much later on this journey, but this is the goal. This is what you're looking to. This is where you're like, hey, I don't mind feeling uncomfortable today if this is where I'm going to go eventually. And just checking out, you know, the five of cups. We got a little moon right there sending us that moon energy. We have the circular energy right here that, you know, on a quick glance could be very moon. It could also be just, you know, the, the, sorry, the energy that's happening here. And then we have the seven of cups. So there is this kind of like, um, whimsical nature of the beginning of things that happen where we start thinking about, 
like you know just um all of these things just all of the sweet desires of life like this is what i want and that's what i want and da 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 and so you might notice during this time period especially on that monday that that's what you're thinking about or it could be some energy that's happening on thursday friday and saturday when that waxing crescent is in gemini because you're trying to connect the dots because if you feel like these things are out in the sky and this is what you want but there's like an invisible connection between you and that stuff you're going to be spending that time like okay how do i really get it and so you don't need to get everything you know but you you might you know want to work towards these things in different levels and different stages so just be open to the fact that what you want like use that time specifically on that thursday that friday saturday april 15th 16th and 17th to connect those dots and then finally the ten of swords what's actually i enjoy the depiction of the ten of swords in various decks because it really is that feeling that you're going to feel here um, in the five of cups the moment that you feel like you're ready to walk away from something it is going to feel horrible the moment that you decide to challenge your understanding of things for something that is braver bigger and putting yourself out there it is going to feel like there's a part of you that is dying off because it is it's a part that is no longer serving you that just needs to be removed like it's it's just not working for you anymore and that's what it's going to feel like so don't be naive in the fact that you hope that you can make all the decisions and not have to you know confront emotionally uncomfortable situations and if you are at a point where you feel like you want to make these these changes but it's really hard for you to confront these emotional tough situations on your own i really a thousand percent recommend getting a therapist or being a part of some type of community that can help you with doing this because a lot of times what happens is that there will be one scenario that happened in a person's life that kind of really knocked them down and then you know they reinforce that by maybe just their environment reinforces the behavior or they do so the moment that they have to actually face that thing years later Later, it feels like a physical death because you know they have reinforced themselves to be so afraid and to have this visceral reaction to this pain that they think is going to come so if you really feel like that's kind of hindering you or stopping you really consider you know bringing this up with a support system your therapist or going out and getting that extra support as you're going on this journey and they will bring some practicality to the experience for you and also I always talk about accessibility if you don't feel like you don't have support Believe me, you have more support than you know. Specifically, when I talk about being in the US, there are different cities, uh, counties, towns that have access to things there are online resources if you happen to be in school like there's different resources there it just uh, does require the work of you actually looking you know side story before i jump into the planets i was going through a really difficult time when i was 19 because i had to be a caretaker and there was uh, another person who was really financially taking advantage of this elderly person and i remember at that time i really wanted to take a break from school i really wanted to you know take a semester off but i felt like i couldn't i was like i can't you know i uh, was like the first person in my family to go to college i didn't really know how to navigate in these things and i had these unrealistic expectations that i have to be able to do all and then you know i was in this like caretaker role but later on what i learned by working in higher ed and actually being on the other side of that was that there are so many resources available to students and that I could have taken advantage of if I just went and asked questions. I felt like, you know, oh no, there's nothing there or like, you know, I have to go and share this with other people because it's like the, the gatekeepers of like, who do I even start with asking? Just get out there and ask. When I look back at my life, I realize that I've been able to do so much because I asked for help. I didn't grow up with any money. We were on government assistance, but I was lucky enough to grow up in an area that was well, relatively affluent or on the incline when I was growing up. And literally, I just would go to my principal. Like, I couldn't afford to do any of these things. I applied to as many colleges as I could get a fee waiver for. And I just would go and ask for help. Hey, I need this support, <laughs> you know? And if I really needed it to lay it on someone thick, I'd be like, I need this support. I'm poor. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, I want to help. I want to help these black kids. 
<laughs> as you know problematic as it may have seen i took that shit and i ran with it and i did i you know i um think i did pretty well because i went and uh did um my undergrad and my master's degree and i'm always a proponent for um continuing education uh phd um uh, once I get on that get, get on that track but anyway I'm simply saying that in this journey if you need some added help and support it may be right in front of you just don't be afraid to ask for help or to do some research there so now let me go on to the planets let me jump into seeing what's going on now the reason why I wanted to bring up the planets is because currently all of the planets are on one side of the chart all of the planets are pretty much just heavy in this Aquarius, Pisces, Aries energy. And it's literally all on one side of the chart. I mean, we have basically it's Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, and then Gemini. And then not much really happening on the other side of the chart. And what that really means, the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because there's going to there's going to feel like a like an imbalance sometimes people who have particularly good placements in these various areas um they might feel an emphasis somewhere but it's it's still a it's still too much on one side and so what i want to bring up right now is the north and the south node so currently the north node is in gemini and the south node is in sagittarius and what we notice is that with gemini and sagittarius this is the gemini this is the sagittarius all the planets are on this side so what does that mean that means that honestly, as things are rotating, kind of going from this Sagittarius energy, Sagittarius, um, what's next, Capricorn, Aquarius, you know, going into Gemini, these planets are leaving these south node behaviors and going into the north node. So you might see the breakdown of certain things. Now, this is movement that's going to be happening over the months and even years, you know? And I would say um, you'll see like, a rebalancing within like you know a couple months two or three months and then a total you know change of positioning in like two or three years but what this means is that right now in your life I, i've been talking about this on reiki healing hope and i was just and i really needed to go look at the planetary alignment because someone did bring up well is there a particular particular alignment that's happening well here it is now what i was talking about was the channeling session of um this 10-year karmic cycle seven years um five years which was a channeling experience but just from an astrological experience taking the finite numbers out i will say that as these planets move through gemini because the only planet right now that is in gemini is mars so things that are going to be on the left side of gemini are going to have a, a much better perspective it's going to be that new energy it's going to be that north node energy it's going to be what the universe wants you to have to fill you up so mars right now is going to think the best it's going to be your best tool for everything else and then everything else is pretty much an opportunity for you to write all of these things all of these ways that you approached things in the past so everything from pluto saturn jupiter you know um neptune uh mercury um uranus uh, even Chiron, even, you know, getting into some of these uh, celestial bodies, uh, it's going to give you an opportunity. So it feels a little stagnant because it's going to take a couple of months, just depending on the planet itself. But what you'll notice is that Mars is going to lead you forward. So think with your highest mind with Mars and Mars is the warrior. That's why I've been talking about this warrior, or this adventure, because a warrior goes into battle knowing for damn sure that like the stakes are so high that they have to go into battle. They're not going into battle because they know like, oh, I'm going to be able to have this, whatever it is they're battling over. I'm going to be able to have this, you know, I'm just doing this for fun. No, they're going into it because it feels almost like it is contingent. It is very Game of Thrones-esque winter is coming. Like it, it feels like I got to make this work. You know, I will not quit. And it's, and you're going into battle, but you can't go into it like insecure, feeling like I'm afraid I have to do this. No, you're like, fuck this. 
like we about to make this shit work and we're gonna figure out like you know it's 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 about the journey you know it's about um going down and like you know I guess the best analogy that's coming to me is like a fitness journey like when you're working out you say you want to build your muscles up or something like that well how do you build your muscles up you have to like constantly or could I'll say consistently be working out like three to five days and working out the areas that you need to work out to like you know build those muscles up and that's what Mars is Mars is saying like this is a journey you want to feel stronger you want to feel like you you have arrived in your life in these different areas of your life you gotta you gotta get through it and be strategic you know and and use that passion and that fuel almost like you gotta get angry enough to want to make a change you don't have to be angry at someone but just be angry enough to be like fuck this shit I'm going like I'm making this happen I don't I don't give a fuck what's happening right now the shit's about to work out and just moving from that kind of energy um and so Mars is going to lead you and everything else is going to just reinforce old patterns that you have to break so this is a time where you're reinforcing the new pattern so it's going to feel particularly uncomfortable not because you're not getting outcomes but just emotionally uncomfortable these last couple of years have been great for um putting a um a, a, a magnifying glass on mental health and emotional health support but unfortunately that has happen through many people being in uncomfortable situations and that's why I'm always saying like you know reach out to someone who can help and support in the journey if you feel like it's not something that you can do 100% on your own and also challenge yourself to show up for yourself and say hey I trust myself I know that these feelings are you know they're not rational but I, I do understand and I validate that they're here but guess what I know that the only way I'm going to get to the other side of that is to be able to just reinforce the right decision, even though it doesn't feel comfortable now, because eventually it'll feel comfortable and I'll see how great it actually was for myself. So you have that going on again. Saturn is still in Aquarius. It's going to be in Aquarius for two more years. Jupiter is still in Aquarius. It's slowly about to leave and move into Pisces energy and Jupiter and Pisces is nice. You know, um, let me think about this. Yes, I was like, let me say this before I say it. Jupiter, who rules Sagittarius, used to be the traditional ruler of Pisces before Neptune was discovered. Now Neptune is the, the ruler of Pisces. So Jupiter is going to feel comfortable in Pisces, but it's very different. Pisces energy and Aquarius energy is very, very different. You know, Aquarius energy is that energy of being able to be magical but still very practical where pisces energy is just like you are the magic like you know so it's a it's a different kind of shift and that's about your growth so the growth is going to be you know a turning on the inside of I'm just going with it. It doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside. I know that the shift is on the inside. And then those are the type of people that just always end up looking so whimsical and magical. You're like, whoa, how did you do that? You know, Neptune is still in Pisces right now, which um, feels very comfortable to it. Um, and then there's just so much, if I could emphasize anything, there's so much that's happening right now in Aries. Like the sun is in Aries. Chiron is in Aries. Chiron is the wounded he healer. Mercury's Mercury, Venus, Eris, um, just so much energy here. And what it means is that if you, if this new moon, okay, is in Aries on the 12th. Did I say the 12th or the 11th? Let me look at that. On the 12th. If this new moon of energy is in Aries on the 12th, that means a lot of these themes that is happening in your Mercury and Chiron and Venus are going to be themes that you have to work through. And also, I think more importantly, if you know about house systems, house systems are based off of the time you were born. If you know what house Aries is, that's going to be the part of, you know, your life that is really particularly, you know, going through things. Um, and just basically just to make it as simple as possible, it's going through things, but it's only because eventually it's going to get on the other side of that North Node. It's going to pass through Gemini. And when it passes through Gemini, you will finally be on the other side. But it is the work you do now during the times where it's uncomfortable that really shows how big and how much you are going to blossom on the other side of that. So let's go get some clarity for, from the cards. Mm. OK, 
Okay. Thank you, universe, for giving us clarity. <laughs> Uh, side note, I've been going down a straight up rabbit hole of like um, <laughs> cults and groups and stuff because that's kind of one of my favorite pastimes to look at just the things that people do in groups. Um, and what I think is so amazing is that like there's always a song like these groups always have a song. It's always a song that they're singing. <laughs> And I'm like, who writes these songs? Do they get publisher rights or writing credits or something like that? You know, again, has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I am me. <laughs> so your first card is the seer. So basically like the energy that's coming out here is that it's almost like guardian protection, guardian angel, ancestor, just a protection and just almost like the wisdom, this wise energy presence over you that's basically saying like, look, it's going to be uncomfortable for a while, but it's a part of the process. And if you just kind of do the work in the process of, of building yourself back up, you're going to get to where you need to. And it is okay if there's moments where it's tough and difficult. Just know that like, don't, you know, use those moments to get down on yourself. Just simply say it's a part of the process. So that's what the energy is. And not many times before it might've been like, you didn't show up for yourself in the way that you wanted to because of, you know, other things, life, it's okay, you know? Um, but now you know better. So what happens? You know better, you do better. Then you have elephant again, this wisdom energy, you know, the, all, the memory um, of all of this, the memory of how things were in the past, the elephant never forgets. Uh, and so this is a moment where it's like a part of getting over what these, these habits are that no longer serve you is maybe remembering what they were and doing the work to get over them. And then you have the fawn. So that's that's this um, Mars going past Gemini. And then the next planet that will eventually hit past Gemini is, I think it's Uranus. Planets move at different paces as well. Hold on. Let's just stick with Mars right now because Mars is already in Gemini. But Mars is going to be the first planet that really, you know, hits past Gemini. And so you're going to feel refreshed. You're going to be super proud of yourself that you did the hard work of getting to the other side. And then you have the harpy eagle, which is you have to have that vision. The seer is saying you have protection. See it. Trust me. But the harpy eagle is saying, look, you need to look. You need to actually be able to see what you want. And we had that. We had that here with the queen of wands. This is where you want to go, okay? Where you just melt into the experience. And this is how you're going to be able to get there. You have to be able to see past your current circumstances to get to where it is you want to go. And then you have the Palomino, which is the freedom that I have been talking about this entire time. That's going to get there. That's going to get you in the area that you want to go in the direction that you want to go. But it just takes doing the work. Let me tell you, the, the, the bravest thing you could ever do is learn how to have delayed gratification. Because delayed gratification is really like the foundation of some of the things that we love to this day, the resistance, the resilience, you know, just we move in such a fast and quick world, but like building things up still take time. And sometimes people can get emotionally and mentally down because, you know, um, building something doesn't go as quickly as, um, as this quick digital age that we are in and that's okay i think that's what makes you special that's what's going to get you in the direction you want to go to so i enjoyed sharing this moment and sharing this space with you all of course you got some pick of cards coming up i i i i i i i started off and i didn't even explain what else is new so you're gonna have two pick a card sessions coming up this week and then of course you're gonna have another moon cycle reading the following week child we won't get into that we might throw in a little bit of the planets and whatnot we're gonna have this different stuff going on and also there is an array tarot tier on patreon so if you want to get access to the extended reads and i kid you not they are three dollars and 33 cents a month you all know i care about financial accessibility so if you want to be able to do that there's a link in the description box and it is a part of the reiki healing hope 
Patreon where I teach different um, healing styles, different modalities. We have different educational conversations, uh, meeting together as a group. So if you join the the family tier, um, you will get access to these readings and all the other stuff happening. But if for some reason you're like, eh, I just want to be a part of, you know, Ray Tarot for the same price, you will get the Ray Tarot readings weekly. Um, and there's going to be some fun stuff that's happening there, like live card pulls and just more as that continues to build out and grow. But yes, head on over, head on over, head on over. Child, I'd be doing discounts too. Why? Because I just, I, I just want everyone to have access, you know, and I want everyone to have community. And so just come on and have a good time, y'all. Just have a good time. So I'll see you next time yeah okay ciao <laughs> bye y'all